hello everyone welcome to biotech notebook in this video we are going to see our overall view about uh, fermentation process this industrial fermentation process are increasingly popular for the production of bulk fine chemicals and pharmaceuticals and biofuel biopolymer production okay so this process include two stages one is upstream processing and second one is downstream processing so first let's see about steps involved in upstream processing okay an established upstream fermentation process divided into four basic component parts okay first step is the formulation of media second one is the sterilization process and third one is the production of pure culture and fourth one is the growth of the organism in the production fermenter so let's see in detail about these steps okay so the first step is the formulation of media Media is nothing but it provides essential nutrients and minerals to support the growth of the organism. We used to formulate media for two purposes. One is for inoculum development and another one is for production media. That is media for production fermenter. Okay. So look into the picture. This is, is your first step. That is you are going to formulate media from the raw materials. Here you are going to formulate two types of media. One is for inoculum preparation that is media for production of pure culture and another one is for production media. The media which we are going to formulate for inoculum development which supports the growth of the organism. Okay. The second media that is production media which supports the growth of the organism and also product which you are going to produce okay so production media supports the formation of target product and your media which is used to develop the inoculum is support the growth of the organism so which is the difference between the two media you are going to formulate okay then your second step is sterilization process okay sterilization process is nothing but it is the process through which all forms of life are destroyed removed or permanently inactivated so this we have to sterilize the medium fermenter and ancillary equipment then the sterilization process can be accomplished by several methods including heat mostly we are using moist heat that is known as steam and chemical radiation or microfiltration moist heat that is steam widely used for the sterilization of media matter microfiltration is used to sterilize the air and media which contain heat sensitive components then the third step is production of pure culture in this step you are going to produce active pure culture in sufficient quantity to inoculate the production vessel so for that first of your desired organism is taken from stock culture and it is also known as inoculum vial content which we are going to transfer from this stock culture to shake flask is known as inoculum so first few microliter of your inoculum is taken from this inoculum vial and then it is transferred into a shake flask which contains growth media okay this process is known as inoculation okay the transfer of inoculum from the stock culture to shake flask is known as inoculation okay after inoculation this shake flask is placed in an incubator shaker so the cells can grow and reproduce so we will grow the cells to a particular density and these cells are used to inoculate a small fermenter which is known as seed fermenter okay so once the cells are transferred to the seed fermenter they are grown to a particular density in seed fermenter okay once you got your required volume then you will inoculate the culture into production fermenter or if you need more quantity then you will go for the seed drying that is you will inoculate your culture into increasingly larger seed fermenter until your required volume and density is reached okay after that you will inoculate from this to production fermenter okay okay this is known as seed drying then the fourth step is growth of the organism okay so here this growth of the organism in production fermenter under optimum conditions for product formation okay so your fourth 
step is taking place in production fermenter so production fermenter is nothing but it is a closed cylindrical vessel which supports the biochemical activity of your organism to convert your raw material into product okay here there will be your product formation takes place and this production fermenter is also known as bioreactor as i already explained the production media should be formulated to promote the synthesis of the target product okay so once the fermentation process is over the fermentation broth containing the cells and the, your media is removed from this production fermenter this is known as harvesting after harvesting your product need to be separated this is accomplished through the downstream processing okay so after harvesting this process comes under downstream processing and this is known as upstream processing so, so from the inoculation to production fermenter it is upstream processing and all the purification step comes under downstream processing next process is downstream processing okay so the treatment of the culture broth after fermentation to concentrate and purify the product is known as downstream processing okay in downstream processing there are three types okay depending on the fermentation product there are three types of downstream operation okay one is biomass itself so your biomass that is your cell itself a product example bacchus yeast and second one is product within the cell this is known as intracellular product example enzyme and recombinant protein and third one is extracellular product that means the product which is present in the media that is outside of the cell okay example ethanol antibiotics and monoclonal antibiotics bodies major steps in downstream processing are cell removal cell disruption and cell debris removal primary isolation product enrichment and final isolation okay let's see each steps for a different type of products so let's see the steps involved in the purification of the cell mass that is if your product is the cell biomass itself okay so if the cells of the product uh, very little or no downstream processing is required just you will remove your cell mass from the liquid so for that we will use filtration microfiltration and centrifugation techniques to remove the liquid from the cell biomass so your cell mass is your product and you will dispose the liquid or you will recycle it okay so it's very simple process next second type of your purification process here your product is outside the cell that is your product is present in the liquid phase okay you have to recover the product from the liquid phase so for this process also the first step is still removal okay so here you will remove the cell mass and you will get the liquid for the product purification okay so for uh, to remove the cells you will use filtration microfiltration and centrifugation techniques so after this process you will get separate the cell mass from the liquid and you will dispose here cell mass not liquid okay because your uh, product is present in cell free liquid okay so once you get the cell free liquid the next step is primary isolation so in primary isolation you may use any one of these techniques that is solvent extraction aqueous two phase liquid extraction adsorption precipitation ultrafiltration the aim of the primary isolation is to remove the impurities from your product and the impurities having the properties that are different from those of your product okay. the selection of your method depends upon the physical and chemical properties of your product and the surrounding material the next step is product enrichment okay in product enrichment you will use mostly the chromatographic technique to purify your product so here you will separate the impurities from your product and that impurities having the same properties of your product in here your product and uh, the impurities have the same characteristics okay so so this product enrichment step is known as highly selective and the next step is final isolation okay so in final isolation step you will use ultra filtration method for liquid products and drying for solid products okay and then after ultra filtration you will go for crystallization and then it is followed by centrifugation or filtration to purify your product okay so after final isolation you will get your product so then you will go for packaging third process 
here product is present inside the cells whole broth from the fermenter undergo cell removal process so here filtration microfiltration or centrifugation is used to remove your cell mass from the liquid so here the your product is present inside the cells so after cell removal step you will dispose the liquid or you will recycle it and your product is your cell biomass okay so concentrated cell suspension you will get from this step the next step is cell disruption because your product is present inside the cells so you have to break up the cells so that step is known as cell disruption so the method used for cell disruption is homogenization so using homogenization you will break open the cells and you will release their contents for subsequent purification the next step is cell debris removal okay your product is present with your cell components so you have to remove the cell debris so you will use filtration microfiltration or centrifugation techniques to remove the cell debris okay so then you will dispose the cell debris and you will take the cell homogenator with product is present in cell homogenator primary isolation to remove the impurities which has the properties different from the properties of your product so so same technique solvent extraction aqueous two phase liquid extraction adsorption precipitation and ultrafiltration techniques you will use so the selection of methods depends upon the physical and chemical properties of your product in product enrichment you will use chromatographic technique to purify your product Next step is final isolation so in final isolation you will use crystallization precipitation ultrafiltration and drying methods okay ultrafiltration is used for liquid product and drying is used for solid product okay so after drying or ultrafiltration you will get your product in your required form okay it may be in a crystal form or it may be in a powder form okay so after this process you will go for product packaging and we have to consider one more important point is disposal of the effluent okay so so in each step you will get some waste to dispose so this is the final step disposal of effluent okay okay so the effluent is nothing but the waste produced during your fermentation process so you should dispose your effluent very safely without harming the environment okay thank you thank you for watching my videos if you like my videos please do like share and subscribe